how to do dish. You gotta learn how to do pantry, making salads and soups. You gotta learn how to work the main lines. You gotta do the broiler. I did that too and it was really fun. But every single position, you have to know how to do something about it. Anyone else? I have one. Yes. When you graduate, Yes. And you get your degree. Does your life change? Your career, your professional status change at all within the organization? Only if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So right now, once I graduate, I'll still just be the private dining sales manager. But that will open my degree will open up the doors for me. I have goals of working in the education department. So we have a self-service management system. That's how we train our employees. And I want to be a part of that who comes up with the manuals and comes up with how to train people, what we teach them, how they learn. And so I, with my degree, I'll be able to do that. Our company is based, well, they were originally in New Orleans, but now they're based in Orlando. So luckily for me, I got to train in Orlando and I got to train at one of the really great stores and I met a lot of people and a lot of people that were in the video were uh, a lot of people that were talking about her they still work for the company and I got to meet some of them so that was definitely a pleasure there's some people at our store now that have actually met Ruth Purtell I'm not that fortunate but there are some of those that's been with us for a very long time and that's just I think it just goes to show how great the company is that people want to work there for over 20-25 years at a restaurant I think so to answer your question. Is there any other questions? Yes. Do you still work in your previous positions as a manager? Sometimes. <laughs> because sometimes we might need some help. Like on the holidays, I'll come in and I'll help and I'll work as a server assistant. My boss, he calls it a server assistant supervisor. <laughs> But I still help out, and sometimes we just got a new system on our open table. Are any of you guys working in restaurants or hospitality? So are you familiar with open table? So we got our new open table system, and I've been helping out with the hostess with that. So on last Saturday, I went in and I host for a while. So sometimes, but I don't really have to, but it's just because I want to do what you love, love what you do. So. Anybody else? Now, uh, Jessica, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'm not sure how many of these folks have dined in on Ruth's Chris, and I haven't been in one since I yes. retired and lost my expense account. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you folks are on the upscale end of this business. We are. And that was one of the things that I noticed in the video. The porterhouse was $13. That was about 1976. So it's 2019, the porterhouse about $68 now. So the highest entree that we have on our menu is our 40 ounce tomahawk, tomahawk steak, and that's $124. But it's enough to feed four people. So we are kind of on the pricier side of things, but it's definitely worth the price, I believe. So you're in sales, right? I'm in sales. So as, as you're selling, do you have a, on your sales experience, do you have a, uh, a per cover cost that you're trying to sell? I don't have a per cover cost. The restaurant doesn't have a per cover cost, but I have a, a group. I have, I have a group. I have certain groups that I want to meet. I want to get with the financial groups. We do a lot of business with FedEx. We do a lot of business with St. Jude, and I try to keep in contact with them and keep my clientele going so I can get these managers. I want doctors, lawyers, the people that like to have business centers, we like to do those as well. But we like to do celebrations as well, too. So I don't really have like a specific target. Just anyone that wants to come in and have a great experience and enjoy a great steak. And the other thing, if you would point out, is that if I believe your menu is all a la carte. Our menu is all a la carte. And one of the things that we suggest to our servers and our services is when you're selling to your guests, when you're talking to them about the menu, let them know that it is all a la carte, but it's family size too, so that they won't order too much. All of our sides are family size, so one side of my favorite sweet potato casserole is enough for four people. So 
it's pricey, but like I said, it's you can come in there, you can definitely share, and it's well worth it. But I think that is all that I have for you all today. What else we got for Jessica? Anything at all? Questions? Food and beverage? Have you ever been in? great story um so i'm over in private dining and those rooms are for sale you want to get those rooms you have to pay a food and beverage minimum our food and beverage minimums are typically between 15 to 1800 per group so i got a phone call this week i got a phone call this week from a lady and she said that her sister had just gotten out of the hospital she has leukemia and it's her daughter's sweet 16th birthday and she wants to come into the restaurant. This is their favorite place to go. And she, but she can't be around a lot of people. So it's just like, well, are your rooms in use tonight? It's like one of them is, but one of them isn't. And she says, well, can we, do you mind, like, if we sit back there? That's an easy yes for me. You know, I don't, I'm not sure about everybody else, but that's an easy yes for me. So I said, if it's not in use, you can definitely come in and, excuse me, have this room to yourself. So the lady who actually was sick, she didn't even know that all this was going on. She thought that she was gonna to have to come in and wear her mask. And um, when they walked into the bag and she was her and her daughter and they were just so excited and we made sure that we had all kind of birthday confetti on the table, a personalized menu for them. And I we typically have just regular candle holders, but I got a little, cheap Dollar Tree glass and I put some water and some candles in it and some baby breaths and I lit a candle and we set it in there for them and they were just blown away and she was so happy and so grateful she actually gave me a gift but yeah. she was so happy but these are the kind of things that keep us going there are some challenges I think you're going to come across many challenges within any establishment that you work in but as long as you put the guests first that's the number one thing that we consider. If this was me in this situation, how would I want to be treated? And if these are our guests, we want you to come back. We want you to be a raving fan. We want you to talk to your friends about us and keep coming back. So if it's not just going to ruin the world, then whatever you want, we can have it. We can accommodate you. We can make it special for you. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else? Now you mentioned your predecessor went to char in nashville yes and you folks may know that there's a char here on highland uh just down the street um so i guess the money was better or the job was a promotion or she likes or that person likes the, nashville or all the above the sales manager that worked before me she had worked at our location for about eight years and she started off as a hostess and then she became the sales manager and I think that she just wanted to do something different she had younger children when she first started working there and they are adults now so she's like it's just me I, I you know I'm looking around for something else anyway so she got accepted at char and she left I have uh, met with the sales manager at char Shelby she's absolutely wonderful we actually have a sales group but this is something that's actually beneficial to my job as well i created a sales group with the sales manager at char and the sales manager at folks folly and the sales manager across the street from us at capitol grill so every month we'll get together at one of our locations and so we'll no flemings huh they were they couldn't show up to the last one so i haven't actually had a group meeting with them yet I've seen them at other showcases that we've done uh, for other vendors, but I haven't actually had a group meeting with them. But we get together every month and we'll have dinner and we'll discuss the challenges of what's going on. If you have any availability here, then I don't have it here. Can you, can I send this guest to you? Actually this morning, Heidi at Folks Folly, she's the sales manager over there. She sent me an email and she says, hey, I have this lady, she called. She wants to do a lunch and we're not open for lunch. Do you have anything available? Of course I have anything available. Easy sell right there for me just by creating a group with my peers. It's not all about competition. It is, but it's not all about 
that if you can help your neighbor, help your neighbor. And when you're full, and when you'll I'm send full, to, you'll send something to her. I'll send something to her. I'll send something to Capital Grill. I'll call around and or Flemings because I've called them too. I'll call around and I'll say, hey, you guys have anything available? And they'll say yes or no, and then they'll find out what kind of deal I had working out with them if I had one, and they'll try to accommodate them the same way because we want we're in the same area. We want to help everybody grow. And we want to help our guests be happy. Do you feel like it's a little bit easier for those kinds of groups where you can have those kinds of opportunities to send people back and forth? Um, do you think it's easier in like the high end part of the business, or do you think that works at like the mid level as well? I think that that would be perfect for the mid level. Um, my hospitality journey didn't start at Ruth's Chris. I started off working at CGR Fridays, mm -hmm. and then I worked at Gangs Girl. I worked at like three CGR Fridays, but if there had been that camaraderie, then a lot of things would have been better, I think. I don't know if they do that, but I think that it would definitely be beneficial on all levels. Now, um, your career path. Yes. You mentioned HR. You mentioned going to Orlando. Yes. So you're interested in that aspect rather than getting into operations or being a front of the house manager or a GM or something like that? I think that I would be a great front of house manager. I talk to my GM about it all the time and he agrees, but we are open 365 days a year and we are open till 10 and sometimes our front of house managers are there really 